Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. You're entered into thine house, for they become to search out all the country. But look what it said she did. And the woman, speaking of Rahab, took the two men and hid them. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, buddy. And said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. Is it ever okay to lie? Now, I want you to think about that. Is it ever okay not to tell the truth? I want you to meditate on that for a little bit. Something that I pondered on this morning. Because she didn't tell the truth there, did she? But is it ever okay not to tell the truth when it comes to God? When it comes to His will? Like one time in Germany, this nun had never lied in all of her life, ever. And yet there was these two Jews that were hidden. And they knew that she had never lied and they came to her door and knocked on her door and said, are you high? They, they believed her so much because they knew she had never lied and looked her in the eye. Do you have two Jews hiding here? And she said, no, I don't. Do you think God held that against her? No. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. It came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate when it was dark that the men went out. She said, this is she still talking, whether the men went... I do not know. Pursue after them quickly, <laughs> for you shall overtake them. I like this girl. I like this girl already. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the sh- stalks of flax. She had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan and to the forts. As soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. Now let's look at verse 8. Before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. She said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and and, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. and What He did unto the kings of the Amorites, They were on the other side of Jordan, Sahan and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our heart did melt. Neither did these remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God, in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now look at what she said to him. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord since I have showed you kindness that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And I'm going to stop there and I'm going to tell the rest of the story. We know what happened. We know that they told her to take a red scarlet thread and tie it out her window. And she did that. And I want you to, 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 before I go into this message, I want you to look where her house was. Her house was not in the city, sitting on the ground. But her house was on the top of the wall of Jericho, the very top of the wall. Some people said it was to the left of the wall. I've heard many documentaries, I've heard many, many different studies. But her house was on the wall. and They told her, to get that red scarlet thread and said unto her that everyone that remains in the house will not die. Everyone, because when we come into this city, he told her everybody's going to die. 
when this event takes place, and these walls come tumbling down, everybody that is inside your house, when I see that red scarlet thread, he said, not a hair of their head will be harmed. Somebody say amen. Amen. The reason that the Lord, I believe, gave me this message is because He has been speaking to me about the hour, this hour, how that people are making up their mind. People in the church house, people that they call themselves Christians, people that uh, name the name of God. God said to me, and He did say to me, that in this hour, people are making up their mind. But He also went on to say, For those that have made up their mind for me, He said, I'll keep you from that hour. Come on. That hour of temptation. And it's coming. This is a type of what I want to show you about Rahab. All of her life, she had been a harlot. Men had come and gone in her life. Men had come into her house and gone out of her house. Probably how many, how many I don't know. But something began to take place in this hour. Something on the inside of her began to change. I thought it was ironic because when you and I get in the high place on the wall, we can see everything that's coming. Every day she watched as they began to move towards the city. She could see them better than anyone. Why? Because her house was on the highest place of the wall. And there she watched as the children of Israel Now that Moses was dead in Joshua, which means Jehovah is our salvation. Jehovah, praise God, is our deliverance. He is the one that's going to keep you and I alive in this moment, in this time of tribulation, when the walls will come down. And God said to me that she knew that certain death, that there was certain death that was coming to the city. And I declare to you today by the Word of God that during the tribulation period that is soon to come upon this world, there will be certain death come to those who mock God and those who are unbelievers and those who played church and played around with God. But praise God today, God wants you to know that you still got time in the hour that we live to make up your mind just like Rahab did. Will somebody say Amen? So I want to take my message, and God, God knows how to give it. He gives the most incredible messages to His people. And I give Him all the praise. If you've ever studied the word Rahab, her name meant broad. And I can preach all day, and I'll say a little bit about the Scripture before I want to show you what her life, how she started and how she finished. The Bible said that straight is the gate. And narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. God said, He said it, not I. He said, but there would be few, He said, that would enter in thereby. But then He went on to say that wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. The Bible says that a lot of times that man thinks that he's right. He thinks he's doing right. He thinks just because he goes to church and just because he goes through the motion, this is a lie of the devil. Let me tell you something. Let's not be deceived in the last day. Amen. But he went on to say that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but he said the end thereof are the ways of death. Rahab knew because she was on the wall. And Thank God she had a promise. You and I have got a promise today. I'm not worried about tomorrow because I've got a promise today. I'm not worried about the next hour because I've got a promise right now. You've got a promise right now that God promised. He said, whether you live or die, He said, you'll see me face to face. He said in the Scripture, He said in the Word of the living God, He said, though you live and believe in me, He said, you will not die. And those who died and believe in me, He said, I'll raise them up on that day and they'll see me once again. Will somebody give our God praise? When I thought about that, she took the spies. They had come into the land. We need to let the Word of God come into our Jericho, into the place that we want to bypass. 
This was a place, Jericho was a city that God said, I don't care what else happens, this place cannot be bypassed by my word. This place has got to be dealt with. This place has got to come down. This place has got to be destroyed because it's not of me. It's not of my kingdom. And it's not what I want in my place, in my life, in your life. It's not what He wants. The Bible said that she took the spies and and hid them. And I thought about the scripture. I'm getting to my message. I want to, I want to, I want to lay the foundation. And I, and I thought about how that, that you and I, praise God, we've heard the word. But it's not enough just to hear the word. It's not enough just to come to church. It's not enough just to go through the motions. We can praise God all day, but our heart's right. We can worship God all day, but are we living right? God said in His Word to us today, these spies represent when you hide My Word in your heart, it will always be the same in your life. You've got to hide the Word of God in your heart today. You've got to let it come alive. I told my son the other day, we were talking about the temptation of young people, and I said that's why you've got to choose the Word. That's why you've always got to remember what God said. Amen. That's why that if you've got God in your heart and the Word is hidden there, it don't matter what devil comes to try to seek it out of you. It won't come out of you. He won't be able to steal it because it's planted there. My God, will somebody say I feel God. Say amen in this house. God will not allow His church to be lukewarm. He will not allow His church to be worldly. He will have no part of it. Rahab became, and I know a lot of people don't believe this, but it's true if you'll study it, she actually was part of the lineage of Jesus Christ Himself. So I'm going to show you today through her name, through the word broad, how to escape. Because just as sure as I'm standing here, it's coming. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. I said that her name meant broad. The first thing that I want to say, I want to take the B in her name. She believed what they told her. She feared when she heard what was getting ready to happen. And that's the way that you and I should be right now in the time that we live. We should fear God. But we don't. A lot of times we don't fear God. But we need to fear God. God said, I want you to tell my church that she believed. And she believed she began to prepare and she went out to him and she said, let me make a covenant with you right now. And know what? The covenant that they made was a, a, a type in the shadow of the blood of the Lamb that's placed upon the lintels of her heart. She said, I know what's getting ready to happen. She said, but remember me. There was a thief on the cross one time, remember? And mocked him to his almost to his dying breath. But then he began to see something about the Nazarene. He began to see something that he's never seen. And he began to say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The reason I told you that, even though she was a harlot, and even though he was a bloody thief on the cross, the second thing I want you to know, number one, she believed and she prepared. And number two, God is no respecter of persons. Aren't you glad? He don't, he's not going to bless the preacher or, 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 the, or the youth pastor or, or the elders more that He'll bless you. It's all because He said glory to God that He is no respecter of pray don't matter if you're a harlot, if you're a thief, if you'll come to Him in this hour, the hour that people are making up their mind, in that hour Rahab made up her mind. The thief made up his mind. And in this hour, our glory be to God. You and I, hallelujah, are making up our mind. Will somebody shout victory in this house today? Well, I feel the Holy Ghost of the living God in this place. He delivers from death today. He will grab you up by the nap of your neck. He'll yank you out of here so fast. The devil won't even know what happened as you're blowing by him. Hallelujah. Well, somebody shout, I'm gone from this place. Shout and give Him praise. We can clap Him in this house today. She began to repent. She began to realize she was going to die. When I was a little kid one time, I remember I was just a little boy. And my mom had, I mean, it was an ugly curtain. It's ugly. It's a big old 
nappy looking curtain it had these huge wooden rings on them I mean this curtain man was big enough to cover an elephant with this thing looked like something out of a granny clampet commercial I'm telling you the truth and brother Gilson I remember